This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ready to get techie with you today. And we got a crew with us representing Big Bank International, our gadget technological person over there keeping the uh, digital trains running on time. <laughs> I, I, and you tell me every week if my new explanation fits what you do over there. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I've had more time with Chilla to understand, like, the ins and outs of what he does at Big Bank International. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a tech guy, you know. He's a, he's a tech do, guy that does things and I stuff. Do, I do tablets and phones, you know, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. Mobilities. Mobilities, Mobilities. Yes. So, I got to watch myself now because I'm working on something else that's around mobility, and it's more like vehicle mobility. Yeah. So, I, 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 now I'm, like, checking myself when I, I go one way or another. And all I that. have to say is watch out, Chilla. I'm coming for you. Oh. <laughs> Two weeks in a row. <laughs> yes, that's right. Chilla is away on assignment yes, uh, for is. Big Bank International, I understand, um, in another state, I believe. Yes. So, we're all getting the work travel this week. Yeah. So Except Chilla decided to drive. He went to and he went yeah, well yes but uh, I I think the place he's going I'm going in a couple months too mm-hmm. and I will also be driving and I'm hoping he went to the place I recommended so I can get a scouting report was it the the pop barbecue rock? no 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 it was the the coffee shop uh, comic book uh, cereal oh, place you did mention that pop last rock week. Rochester yeah. dot com uh, check it out it's run by a, actually a couple pro wrestlers own it. Uh, and I work cool. with the one guy in Erie, and so it, was, it looks like a really cool, geeky place, and uh, I'm going to be yeah. checking out in June when I head up yeah, that way. Yeah, he, he posted some dinosaur barbecue something or other. I don't know. Dino something. I don't know. I, it, dinosaur barbecue. Yeah. No, that's their thing. <laughs> that was That's what they catered the last day of uh, Baja with, is dinosaur barbecue. Like It was like, and of course, we're having dinosaur barbecue. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> well, John <laughs> just had it? some. There I was, saw a picture. There, and there was, there was one not far from my hotel, too. So. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes. And also with us, Brian Crawford. I am back. He's back on the airwaves with us. After like a lot of time relaxing and sleeping, I have learned that sleep is not good for your health. I'm falling apart. We're going to get into <laughs> oh, that geez. a little bit later. Oh, no. it makes you, get, it's making you soft. It's making me soft, and I'm crumbling under the, under the pressure of a good long night's rest. We're going to get into that with some awesome things. My old people tech, which I'm going to bring up in a little bit here on Awesome Cast. That's right. Uh, what are you up to these days? I know there's been a little bit of shift in your uh, creative endeavors. Yeah, so I'm working on a few I, new projects. I, I, the, the one, I, some secret projects, something you can talk about? I maybe? can talk about all of them. That's, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I am going to be... Well, I'm working with the Pittsburgh Thunderbirds, which I'm very excited about. Nice. They are Pittsburgh's professional ultimate disc team here in the city of wait, Pittsburgh. Wait, wait, Ultimate Disc? Ultimate Disc, yeah. They're part of the AUDL, which is the American Ultimate Disc League right here in Pittsburgh. They're going to be working with Vicini's Distributing to bring uh, you, you're going to be able to drink beer at the games this year for the nice. first time. They have all captains that are 25 years and under, so it is a fresh, new, young team. It is the millennial team here for Pittsburgh. I'm really excited for everything that they have going on. It's super exciting. It's amazing to watch. Lots of fun. So I've got that going on. Uh, I promise, I, I know I'm, I've said I'm going to be writing for 412 Biz, and now that I have come back from vacation, I've gotten over my illness. It doesn't sound like it, but I have. I'm going to be writing some for 412 Biz, which I'm excited about, and the new project, which is going to be released in about six months, is called PGH Museums, which will be, among many things, the only comprehensive directory of museums and art galleries nice. in western Pennsylvania. Nice. So that's coming in uh, hopefully about six months or so. Nice. Uh, so and, and by the way, that's going to be a project uh, partially of Psychic Media Services. We've brought you guys on to handle our web services. So, 
It's another department, and I don't know all the details of it. That's why Surprise! I'm asking. Hey! <laughs> we're yeah. doing things. You're involved. So. Things I, and stuff. You know, it, it's definitely... It's definitely a thing when when you know you get to the point where you're in a, in like you know quote unquote your own company or a partnership and you literally do not know like there's enough stuff happening, cool stuff happening that you don't know about all the cool stuff happening. Hey, so well, that's a good thing. And there's still that like is a good thing. Yeah, that is that's what I'm saying. It's a good thing. Well, the way I see it is we want this to really come out of the gates running. I think that we're going to get a lot of media coverage when we launch PGH Museums. I think it's a great asset to the community. And we want to make sure that we bring in the best whenever we launch the best. And there is no one better than Sidekick Media Services. Absolutely. The sidekick for your superhero project, that's SidekickMediaServices.com. Wow, and clipping, what a plug. Clipping that out for the commercial. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is why we love having Brian wow. on. He, he, he does our ad reads for us, and yeah. we don't have to worry about it. Actually, can we just kick him the copy for, oh, wait, he's yeah, partaking in the pizza. From our friend Slice. We'll learn a little more about them later. But this is your Awesome Cast. Please check out everything at awesomecast.com where you can uh, check out past episodes, our old awesome chat interviews we've had done over the years. And uh, make sure you rate and uh, subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app and uh, watch the video versions on Facebook and YouTube for Awesome Cast. All of that linked over there at awesomecast.com. Email us at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. That's where you'll get in communication with producer Missy that you just heard a moment ago uh and uh, if you're interested in being a part of the studio audience we do have a studio audience member hello audience member hello hello look oh, at that. somebody in the he's, room he's sticking his head in there hello <laughs> if you want to see this podcast live or if you are interested in any uh sponsorship opportunities please hit up over there awesome cast on twitter as well and uh also you can ask your google home i'm not going to demonstrate it because it never works when i demonstrate it live on the air but i swear this worked i did extensive testing on this ask your google home to play the awesome cast on google music podcast or ask your amazon echo to play wrestling mayhem show on tune in uh, this for the other show. I didn't change the copy. You can you can you can also ask them to use the do the awesome cast, but Wrestling Mayhem Show also brings up the Wrestling Mayhem Show, also a part of this network. Uh, we are here live every Tuesday at sort at uh, Awesome Cast um, on the Facebook page, and uh, also you can uh, see us streaming across the Sorgatron Media uh, networks on Periscopes and Twitch and YouTube as well. But if you want to be part of the chat room, like so many, like Dave Potter of Tiny Shutter Podcast, Scott McTaggart, Mel- Matt Weller and a few more in there hi mom uh you can do that over on our facebook page if you're listening to us live right now and that's the awesome cast facebook page uh also, thank you to our streaming partners, our friends at RiversPGH.com. That's carrying us every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And our friends on the 405media.com. Uh, the other day, uh, yesterday morning, I was on the 405 heading to the airport. And then later that day, my voice was on the 405 doing this show. Uh, so go. that was kind of a cool connection. Uh, our friends at the 405media.com uh, amongst our streaming partners growing every day. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Coffee Club $5 level, our friends at patreon.com slash awesomecast, our friends Matt Weller, who's in the chat room, John Diggy DeGore, and I don't think the new one got in the list, Missy, but John Carmen, who will be joining us in a few weeks, is now a $5 Coffee Club member. You will get, be getting a little bit extra content. This week you'll be learning about how my MacBook was potentially a bomb. Ooh. And we had to dispose of it. Not the whole laptop, but it, we put the part of the laptop. And uh, we'll The tell bad you. part. <laughs> and Scott, yes, Scott McTaggart, I'll stop calling you mom. Uh, anyways, and, and thank you to our friends at, at the fan of the show, $1 level. I believe our longest Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor. Uh, you guys, if you get value out of this show and want some more of it, please go over to patreon.com slash awesomecast and uh, helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. Now, so let's get into our awesome thing of the week. And uh, let's kick off with you, Brian. Uh, Garmin uh, speaking with, and let's just say A-Train this week. <laughs> See, I, I was listening to your little intro when you were talking about all of the ways that you can get the awesome cast. And you actually can't use any of those words now because you could program the A-word to respond to Amazon or Echo. So oh, no. It, it, uh, so it, I can't say Amazon? No. 
Because my house, I actually have some that are programmed. Because I have multiples in the same room, and I want them to do different things. So I have some that respond to echo and some that respond to the A word. Okay. So, it, yeah, it, it could be a mess. Wait a minute. You have multiple? In the same room. In the same room. Yes. Well, we have two Google Homes in here. Well, no, I get two Google, but why do you have? Two Alexas? Yeah. Because in the, the living room, for example, I have the Fire Cube TV. Uh, and okay. the regular mm-hmm. Alexa will do some things with the TV, but it's not as precise as the actual cube itself. So I want to make sure okay. that I'm directly speaking to the cube. In my bedroom, I have an Echo Spot next to my desk so I can look at what's going on while I'm working. But then I have an Echo Show next to my bed that I use as an alarm clock. And when I wake up in the morning, I can see what's on my calendar so, immediately. So I, I, when you say the cube, for some reason, companion cubes pop in my head from Portal. <laughs> nice. I, I talked about companion cube. Her name is Alexa. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, I'm sorry. I, I just went off a tangent. But anyways. Um, <laughs> what the hell were we talking about? Garmin speak. Garmin. Yeah. Garmin has the A train. It does. And I, I bought it because so I, I bought this new car, new to me. It, it's an 08, but it's only got 60,000 miles. Great shape. But I want to make it high tech. So I want to get the car play, but I'm too poor right now to buy it. So I was looking for alternatives and I okay. found the Garmin speak. I was super excited about it. So it, it's in my car. It's, it's a little, a very small little GPS, and it has a little screen on it that just will show you arrows in miles, and it'll tell you if you're going too fast as well. It'll tell you, like, the speed limit that you're driving at if you go over the speed limit. It's a great Alexa. It's a great Echo. It's a terrible GPS. (laughs) So you're in there, and you say, A word, take me to Sorgatron Media Studios, and it'll tell me, enter the address on the app. And I'm like, what's the point of, uh, of a Garmin that you speak to without an actual touch screen when you have to go to your phone to type it in anyways? So as a GPS, I'd say it's, it's very subpar. Mm-hmm. But as an Alexa, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And it's great because it, it taps right into your phone. I, and I'm seeing the picture here, it, it hanging from uh, your, your... Yeah, it's hanging from my, my windshield in my yeah, car. Yeah, and it looks, it, it looks like an Echo Dot like hanging from your windshield, uh, from this view at least. Yes, and that's what it does look like, but it's much smaller, much, much smaller. Mm-hmm. And, it has its, and what's great about it is it has an external speaker, but it also has an auxiliary out cable. But the auxiliary out cable is actually connected to the car charging port. So you don't have to run it from the windshield all around your car. You can run it right from the car charging port directly into your... So so you just need a nice little short cable. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that there's these options because I know when uh, the Echo Dot first came out, like there were some workarounds they had about how you can take an Echo Dot, put it in your cup holder, uh, uh, plug it in uh, to your cigarette light adapter, make a mobile hotspot, and now you had... A, you know, a train in your car. Yeah. Right. And I've gotten several of those options before trying to bring her into my car. And none of them really, none of them really held up to what I was hoping for to my expectations. This is great as, as an a train, mm, yeah. as an a train, as an a train, she works really well. I could actually get my notifications. It'll glow yellow. I love we're training you. Yes. It'll glow yellow when I get a notifica- no, new notification while I'm driving. I could turn the lights on in my bedroom before I walk into the house. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So all of those things are great. I can listen to Amazon Music through it. It does not work with Apple Music yet. Okay. No. However. It's on the way, isn't it? I well, no. So Apple it. Music works with the A-Train, just not with the Garmin oh, A-Train. Which is- yeah, because there's like the level of... If it's an Amazon one, it yes. gets all the features. If it's a second hand, it doesn't yet uh, have all the features. Here's the trick, so though. Limited. Okay. Because the Garmin is attached to your phone, I can actually ask the S lady <laughs> to listen to Apple Music, and then she'll send it to the A train. He will then send it through her external speaker or through the car stereo oh, system. By the way, I love that we have a f- <laughs> a first applied gender identity to these things, and now there's an S lady. I don't think we've ever called it an S lady. Well, yet. all of mine have female voices, yes. so yeah. unless yes. they've transitioned, I, which is possible. I mean, it, they're it, all... there's that. No, and, and also, I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable when my mom talks about the guy in her phone. Uh, so but does she have hers as a man's voice? It's a man's voice. So for her, it's a he, and right? I think they have a relationship. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's another thing. I'm wondering if the A train can do the conversation aspect. I haven't tried that because so Amazon Echo 
has several conversation features that, that have been tested in universities mm -hmm. where you can actually have full conversations with a train mm -hmm. right there while you're sitting in your living room or on We've your bed or noticed whatever that like we'll, we'll ask kind of random questions and there was, there is a little bit of a back and forth that happens but you can actually ask her tell her that you want to have a conversation and it'll it'll launch an entirely new program which is way more intuitive and way more conversational. It's actually obnoxious, though, because it's one of those... It's like talking to that friend who, who doesn't let you speak. Like, she just keeps asking you questions and starts grilling you. So you get really annoyed really quickly with her. You try to ask her a question. She's like, oh, no, I want to talk about you. <laughs> so, but the thing is, is if you're... Say you're, you're driving overnight... That could be a nice feature to keep you awake. You've got no one to talk to. Uh, uh, Have a conversation with a, a train. driving companion. Yeah, because yeah. your she she's your Wookie. Another thing that I really like about the Garmin is when the GPS is working, and plus you can also run your your Google Maps or your Apple Maps through her as well. Right. It just won't show you the directions on the on the screen. But when you're talking to her, even in the Garmin mode, it will actually soften the voice of or the sound of the radio you're listening to and have the GPS go over it as if you were using your Google Maps oh, nice. app or your Apple Maps app on your phone. So you can still do everything that you want to do with the A-Train, and it doesn't, it doesn't cut out your audio completely or cancel your radio to give way to the Garmin app, which I really like. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, Ron Kraus, what is your awesome thing? Okay, also, so also a little gadgety. So I have to, I have to um, confirm that I don't own this device. I just read this article today, okay, and I just thought it was a great idea because you know while we're talking about the A train, <laughs> the G lady in my house, you know, we my wife actually was complaining the other day that she can't talk to the ceiling fan. So, um, <laughs> but that's a whole other subject. Just that sentence by itself. Yeah. But so, but this this surge protector from APC, which I did not realize they had started making, mm. half of the ports on the surge protector are actually addressable by A Train and G Lady. Wow! So, and but what's really cool is there are three regular you know plugs mm -hmm. and two USB ports that so. you can actually you know, turn on and turn off from, you know, Google and, and Amazon and things. And I wow. just thought, wow, that's a great idea. You know, I have multiple lights in my uh, office that I use right now with a single plug that I've plugged a surge protector into that plug, and then it turns both of those on. But to address individual plugs in a surge protector, I just thought was – a really great idea. That's a really good price, I think, for everything that it does. Exactly. Uh, going for fifty about fifty five dollars on Amazon. I would pay for that because the other thing you, you pay for a, just a single plug and you're paying twenty about, bucks. Tw about twenty dollars, right? Yeah. So now you got a surge protector with uh five addressable ports, quote mm -hmm. unquote. I, I just think that's a great idea. I really uh, you know. I think that's incredible. And especially where I live. So my house was built a, a good while ago and I don't own it, so I'm not gonna spend any money to right. rewire it. But it has so few plugs, and it's mm -hmm. such inconvenient places. And a lot of them, like like in my bathroom, as well as my entrance to my house, especially the entrance to the house, it's got a lamp. There's no ceiling light, and it's turned on with a, with a light switch, yeah. and that's like the only plug on that side of the room. Right. So something like this would be great, because then I could just do the voice for the, exactly, the actual for the lights. Exactly, extra devices, yeah. yeah. I love it. That's awesome. So, so my, I, had trouble, I had a little trouble coming up with an awesome thing. So my my awesome thing is um, again did another one of those Aero West ones where we talked about the jet RC jets. By the way, there are two RC jets. Nice. This one, and they had, did the propeller tricks and everything too. Um, but there was one uh, team that I had chat with uh, from Alberta, Canada, uh, one of the advanced teams out there this weekend, and I got a kick out of. Nope, that's the wrong one. Uh, over here, uh, I got a kick out of, you see a little bit of the plane in the background if you're with us on the video, um, but apparently they had, apparently this was a motion picture from, uh, thank, thank you Google Photos for just doing that, um, but uh, it was too cold and, and Alberta has snow for like a long, long time and you still need to test your plane and, and you, you know, you don't have a clear runway to do that. So they built skis into their they they had modular uh, landing gear and they built skis so they could at least get it into the air to see 
if it can fly, how it flies, what they need to engineer uh, beyond that. Very so cool. I thought it was kind of a fun workaround. And also, and this is a thing I've heard come up uh, several times, because I, I think, you know, we, we've probably seen the stories a couple years ago where it was so hot in Phoenix they couldn't uh, land or, or, or I think the planes couldn't take off, right? Um, like the temperature that ha- that goes into aerodynamics and that these guys can, um, you know, do something up in Canada. Then they have to go to like Los Angeles or Texas or Florida to fly the planes and they don't see 70 degree weather to know how it's going to fly oh very interesting yeah so um it's 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 a curious problem for our nor more northern neighbors i guess um or even northeast or you know uh the michigan the people i I think we're having the same conversation too so that was kind of like the the the, the, what i learned that kind of stuck with me uh as i closed out the uh, arrow season um Hmm. this week so and we'll see. Uh, we'll see what I get out of. Um, uh, we're going to Baja this weekend, uh, Tennessee. So we're going to get dirty again and uh, have some fun with that. So, very cool, awesome stuff. So you know what else is awesome? Our good friends here on the network with the Bardic Mystery Tour. Do you like Dungeons and, and Dragons? Maybe you don't like Dungeons and Dragons. Do you like mysteries and music? It's a band of bards. Solving Mysteries While on Tour. You can check them out at bardicmysterytour.com. They're a bunch of geeks and nerds talking. Well, no, they, why is that there? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, context. It's like, <laughs> we may be a bunch of geeks and nerds here talking tech week to week, uh, but what could be nerdier and geekier than tech? How about Dungeons & Dragons? How about a and d podcast? Our friends at Bardic Mystery Tour regale the crowd with tales of a rock band of bards on tour. They kick in doors, solve mysteries, and as an added bonus, they write original songs, even to the point where they're looking to release those as an album on Bandcamp, I believe, too. So go check them out at bardicmysterytour.com and uh, also on the Sorgatron Media Superfeed, a part of the Sorgatron Media Network. Thanks to those guys for being coming a part of it. Uh, this was something special's coming, guys. We are going to have a pop-up lego bar is this and i'm not sure if it's official i think it is official i think it is like this so it gets weird because there is a brick museum i know in uh in in ohio that some uh some friends had a wrestling show there and they couldn't you know they couldn't call it a lego death match or anything like that like you know you, you, you can't really mess with legos um um copyright over there uh but no it's gonna be I guess they're calling it Bricksburg. This is part of a group uh, created by uh, Viral Ventures. Uh, It's an Australian company that creates immersive events across the globe. Um, It is going to be coming this summer. It's the Brick Bar, a pop-up built from from and filled with more than 1 million Lego blocks. Wow. Wow. And they're mentioning this is kind of a precursor to the the, uh, Mushroom Rally, the live Mario Kart that's going to be uh, happening here in the city. I think that is uh, September through October. That is happening. So there's going to be uh, popping up there as well as in Cleveland, Cincinnati, New York City, Los Angeles, Houston, and Miami. And they pick Pittsburgh? They pick Pittsburgh amongst them. Very cool. So, hey, we got a Lego store, so we better get the Lego bar, right? I don't know how many Lego stores are there. I don't know. I can't imagine many. No, I can't. No, either. no. That that we're getting one. I mean, the obvious like New York City or or maybe L.A. or something like that. Can I just say that's why I like the North Hills better than Robinson because Robinson has every store in the world, but it's all the same stuff. Whereas yeah. like everything we have in the North Hills is so different, mm-hmm. and it's fun to go there and, and see you like have a, a Lego Tesla store. store and a Lego store. We'll like, see how long like, though they're getting rid of all the Tesla stores. There's that they? too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You have like the only like Microsoft kiosk in the yeah. entire like I know I know Chilo's talking about like he had to go to the you know here in the South Hills he had to go all the way to the Ross Park Mar- Mall in the North Hills to service his surface. Yeah. Uh so <laughs> like that's all we have. Crazy. It is yeah, I know. <laughs> service your surface, guys. Um <laughs> But I mean, you know, that that's what that's kind of like a testament is like you, you, you have one place in the city you can take your Microsoft device. Yeah. So but I mean it's not as much you And I was gonna say, while I can appreciate the North Hills for the Windows store and the Apple store, as a large man, as we've spoken about before, 
try to walk into that exact same mall and buy something my size. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Not, not, not good with the May big and tall. the force. Well, they be also with have you. a lot of stores that. Well, uh, you know why? Because trendy people aren't fat, I guess. <laughs> well, there's also a store. See, I, I can't buy any clothes there because I went into a store, and, and I'm not going to name them because I don't want to bad mouth. Right. But I walked into a store, and their sale was a rack that said under $100. Mm hmm. Damn. I walked back yeah. out. <laughs> I mean, these are the same people buying Teslas from them all. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's your context right there. Yeah. But <laughs> it's why the Apple store does so well there. You know, I mean, it, it, it's all context. So um, Dave Potter, again in the chat room, we mentioned SAE. Yes, uh, disclaimer, I am working with them uh, as, as we are uh, going through this, and so does Potter. Um, but he said his work is uh, using Facebook portal to have remote access for on-site help at World uh, Congress Experience, uh, I believe happening right now in Detroit, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the future of on-site help instead of personal travel on-site. So instead of sending everybody to the site, to do, that, that would be like the kind of the helper people. Uh, and he sent a picture. Where did he send that? I'm sorry. I forget which account you sent that to me on. I think it was Facebook. Hold on. But he sent me a picture of it, and it also the A-Train was, was a part of it, too. Hmm. Hold on, partner. Well, the A-Train is tied into Portal, right? Here it is. Here it is. And actually, and there is Dave partner himself in the face, <laughs> the Facebook Portal. Um, although, wait, is it is it Portal, or is it the... That looks like a Portal. Because it, it says, got questions, ask uh, A-Train. Yeah, well, A-Train, por use, Portal uses A-Train. Oh, is that it? Yeah. So oh, okay. A, A Train is the AI in Portal, oh. actually. Oh. It doesn't do as much as your Echo so, Show will do. So it says start with you know A Train asked a WCX, and it's saying like you know find sessions about where's registration, where can I find, uh, where is the code check. So are you going to tell me is this how we're going to replace the registration desk uh, at, at the events that I work with the students <laughs> for Baja and Arrow too? Mm. I mean, if they're doing it on this level, I would not imagine. You know, uh, other than the fact that we are like literally in the desert and maybe Internet is a problem. Yeah. Although, they, although the, the guys that do that, uh, the guys that do that uh, find very uh, creative ways to get Internet and widespread Wi-Fi to the sites in the middle of the desert. Um, mm -hmm. I, I got to check out their antennas last time we were in California cool. and, and their um, interesting um, um, kind of like the live use I've talked about before where it has like all the different cell chips in it. So, but uh, is this the future of this? Do you imagine going to, you know, seeing more corporations like this, like saying, hey, let's just, you know, put a, a, a set up a, 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 you know, one of these devices and it'll just call back home? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I used it with the River's Edge. I had an Echo Show there and I had an Echo you, Show at home. You're and... using it to support your studio. Yeah. Yeah, so. I used it for technical support. I would, or people could just call in, or somebody was at the door, and I would just use the video call. I would video call on the Echo Show from my phone right into the studio to let them know what was Very going cool. on. And, yeah, why uh, not? <laughs> yeah, and, and it doesn't have to be a Facebook portal. I know some people are like kind of down on Facebook's portal because right. of security stuff, but I mean, there's plenty of, like you said, the, the, the Echo Show. Plenty of other yeah. solutions. Or, or, right. or Google or, Hangouts. Yeah, the Google, the Google Homes uh, version of that. Uh, my, my brother um, uh, got his wife uh, one of those uh, at Christmas, and they were, they were they'd been using that for stuff. But that's, again, something he can pick up the phone, you know, and I know he's gone back and forth between uh, Apple and Google and just say, hey, you know, call home. You know, and they can check in and, and check on our, check in on our mother and everything. I would be uh, interested to play with Portal. I, I really want to experience that because the thing is, is with a lot of off-brand Amazon Alexa-enabled items, a lot of times it has a very slow response rate. Mm -hmm. For example, I bought my parents a Eufy Amazon uh, Alexa-powered smart speaker, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like Eufy's version of the Echo Dot. Okay. And you ask the A train a question. And it's like, it's got a laggy response time. And mm -hmm. me, being someone who has so many Alexas, I'm used to instant gratification. And, and I just can't wait. Like, I'll, I'll ask her for the weather. Because you got the p pure A-train experience. That's true. And, and the thing is, is by the time she responds, I could already pull out my phone and look. Or just look at my smartwatch and find it right there. Right. So I don't have time to, to wait for her to make a decision. So I wonder if the response rate is as good on Portal as it is with an Echo Show. And, and if you're looking for the true Amazon experience, now Portal obviously has 
that camera that will follow you. And right, that's the, the big follow. selling yeah. point. And that runs mostly <laughs> on Facebook messages, though. Yes. But one of the big selling points that Facebook has made with the portal is that it's a cheaper Echo Show. But it doesn't do all of the things that Echo Show can do. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're really looking to get into the Amazon ecosystem, I think Facebook Portal is actually not and the route to the go. The Portal starts at 199 with the Portal Plus at 349. I'm not sure what the uh, let's see Echo Show's it. over 200. It's, is it's it under screen three size. It's a screen size. It's a uh, 720 10 inch screen versus a 1080 15 inch screen. Okay. So, um, and they uh, do have it going for as low as 350 at Best Buy. For what's that? Though. For the Echo Show? Uh, no, this is for the Facebook the portal. portal. Yeah, the Echo Show goes for around two thirty okay. right now. And well, so then, I guess in that case, then it's not the cheaper Echo Show anymore. Mm. Not for the more expensive portal, uh, but there's the, okay. cheaper, the portal cheaper portal that okay. they're trying to sell for those economic, oh. e- mm. you know, economical reasons. Um, I don't know. I I, I don't know how. The, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to hear how the volume is on that as well. It's one thing I love. I, I have the new Echo Show and. The volume on it is fantastic. The sound quality is great. It pumps out a lot of volume mm. for the price. I'm looking at a HomePod, and mm. nothing against the HomePod, but it's like four, over $400 oh, for yeah. a HomePod. Oh, yeah. It doesn't do anywhere near the amount of things you that the show does. You know and honestly, I, you, oh, so go ahead. I don't think the volume is – I mean, they, that's one of the big selling points is the speaker, but you can get a Sonos mm-hmm. – thing powered by alexa that does more things Mm -hmm. for a cheaper price or an echo show which has the full hd quality video screen Mm -hmm. right with it uh partners uh uh, correct uh uh, uh, adding some a little bit to this in the chat room uh he says that the event is going on now through thursday uh he says uh it's hard for uh oh oh, this is about the big guy's comment earlier uh (laughs) so uh partners saying um uh he's saying the answers are pre-populated So okay. like that delay thing doesn't uh, happen. Humans are still quicker. Mm-hmm. And he's also saying it's good for talking. He hasn't tried anything else with it. Yeah. So uh, it is a point where he said most people didn't realize he was a real person. Oh, when honestly, up, so. I think that the portal is a better way to go for a conference style situation like this, because with the Echo show, there's no movement of camera. And I think that the, the aspect, that aspect of the portal makes it really stand apart for that type of of use. Because you come up to a table and you're moving left and right at a table, the camera will follow you, and the person you're talking to on the other side can, I think, help you in a much better way than yeah. than versus plus, like, versus as, the show. As or something I've like seen, that. when people walk up to a camera to, for you know use in a situation like a conference, they do not know where to stand. You know, there True. is no context of that. Well, plus, plus you may have stuff plus, set up on the table where they are I, naturally going to be moving. Plus, I'm noticing, like, you know how usually, I don't know if this is a cultural thing or something, but usually, like, when people see a camera, they're like, oh, I'm in the way, you know, and, and duck out and stuff. Sure. I'm noticing, because people from different countries go, come to these, these things, and I'm noticing, like, some of them just have no awareness that that's a thing they shouldn't stand in front of. Mm-hmm. Right. Like like something like that. And there's an event that's going to be, you know, attract tons of different things. So, um, you know, that what do I do with this? You know, uh, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Do they have devices like this where they're at and everything? You know, it, it's it's, you know, kind of makes that accessible a little bit by kind of correcting you for that. Yeah, I think. Well, I do think Facebook understands what the smart screen is for, which is something I think Google's really dropped the ball on. It's for video conferencing. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. One hundred percent. Yeah. They understand it. Amazon understands it. Google doesn't. And that's why I think that the Google smart screen is going to be uh, – now, I know they have third-party ones that are doing the camera, but I think that's why Google right now is kind of in last place in this mm-hmm. whole smart screen well, contest. Google can't get, can't get their act together to decide a platform yeah. at this point. It's, it's crazy. Uh, you know what's not crazy? As uh, our good friend uh, Brian was uh, demonstrating earlier in the show, our good friends at – Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. There you go. Nice of Brian's uh, demonstrating how delicious mm. that is. There it's it is. It's too good, Sorg. Right mm. here. Good. The original, the OG in Beachview, as well as over in Carnegie, PA, the East End, and PNC Park that I understand has baseball these days. Uh, unconfirmed. Uh, so go check them out if you're in any of those locations you want to get some good stuff from Slice on Broadway. Always good hanging out with those guys. Uh, <laughs> and uh, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com, PJH underscore Slice 
on the Twitter. Potter also chimes in, no, it's engineers. We're clueless. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I'm with you on that. I can, I can, I can get that. Uh, so <laughs> I've, uh, I've had a lot of experience hanging out with uh, uh, engineers, especially over the last couple of years here. So, um, and uh, was a perfect front door. You should nicely. Oh, uh, slice uh, perfect night front door. You should nicely open. Thank you. Thank you for not wanting to kick the door down. <laughs> All right. Or at least holding back on your desire to kick the door down. Ron Kraus, you have a couple of things here. I know you got you got something that's grinding your gears here, and I usually Ooh. don't like to throw negative stories. Uh, this is the awesome cast after all. But well, it's not grinding my gears. I'm not really a I'm not really a fruit guy. But for those fruit, fruit people guy. in the world, you know, Netflix s- says they're killing airplay. Yeah. Which my question to you was: Is really that? Is it really that big a deal when the Apple TV has its own app anyway? Granted, I understand that it's really cool to be able to hit that button and just magically have yeah. it appear on the TV. But in the in the grand scheme of things, if they killed it and there wasn't an Apple TV app, mm-hmm. I think that would be a little more concerning. It's kind of, I mean, if, if it was to the effect where it's like how if you have an Xfinity app and you have even it plugged into your like HDMI adapter to a television from your iPad and it says, hey, we're not allowed to do that. Like if that was the, the case. Yeah. Uh, you know, where it says, yeah, you're not allowed to do this. And we don't have like, basically you could not get it to right your to thing. your, to your so large screen. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing with this. They did this. Uh, they are citing a technical issue, I believe. Right. Uh, let's see. Members of Netflix have a uh, great Netflix experience on any device. They use airplay support rolling out to 30 third party devices. There isn't a way for us to distinguish between devices. What is an Apple TV versus what isn't or certify these devices. Therefore we have decided to discontinue Netflix airplay support to ensure our standard quality. And I was going to say, uh, uh, it was going to be, uh, we have Chromecast, but we know it's a Chromecast, but Chromecast is also in TVs. Yes, so it is. what is the difference in that spec? Well, I wonder, is there some kind of reporting that the Chromecast is it, doing? I would hope so. Other than, other, this is, otherwise, this is a weird statement. Can I take off my headphones and put on a tinfoil hat for a moment? Because um, I'm, sure. s- I'm sniffing a did conspiracy. You, did you bring one with you? I, I will imagine. Let's we theater the mind. Let, we, let's do you send, send somebody across the street. I've, I've got the tinfoil cap okay. hat on. Okay. We're, we're imagining. There you go. We're our audience member. We'll get it. So <laughs> Apple's coming out with that new program. And, and you break this story is really interesting to me because I love conspiracies. Um, and, and one's brewing right now in, in my head. Apple's coming out with that new program, Apple TV plus. And Netflix has decided not to go with Apple TV Plus. Well, and not, no, they not haven't even with gone with the TV app as it is yeah. now. So I'm just thinking maybe there's something going on between Apple and Netflix that maybe is bigger than Apple TV because I feel like that's something that could easily be remedied. Throw in the, the fact that they have pulled the ability to subscribe directly on an Apple device as well. Oh wow! Uh, like if you can just hit subscribe, it's on your iTunes bill, uh-huh. uh, and like you That's know, true. a percentage yeah. of that is going to go to Apple versus if I just did it through their website, right? Yeah. That's so a good point. like that. So there, now we've compounded all of these, and it's Netflix who is the biggest subscription streaming by far. provider right. yeah. by far. They are the HBO of uh, the subscription streaming. Um, they're playing hardball with Apple, who is getting into this game uh, in and you know controlling you know that many people uh, uh, with their you know, with their billion billion pockets, y'all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but the thing is, is I they keep saying that with the billion pockets, but I, I'm color me unimpressed because there's still a Netflix app, as you're saying. There's a Netflix yeah, exactly. app, app on Apple Absolutely. TV. It's no, not going to pull anyone away from Netflix. There's a big deal today because there's there are other things that have happened with it. And right, who, but it is also a who pulls support for AirPlay. That's odd. Yeah, that is that. Is, that seems weird. You, ha- you have to wonder if maybe Brian in his conspiracy Ooh. isn't a- is actually something that is happening. Well, thank you. Oh, we got, oh, got tinfoil. There it is. There Excellent. it is. Who needs theater of the mind? We have an actual tinfoil hat. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the tinfoil hat is happening. It's more on... like a tinfoil unicorn. I'm sorry. 
It's like a, a dunce cap. Yeah, I think that's somewhat appropriate. But yeah, I, I think there is something brewing. I think there's a conflict between these two companies, these mega companies, and uh, I that this story to me is fascinating. Because oh, Alex, of, that of, was awesome. Hmm. Netflix, you need to chill out and get it. No. <laughs> oh, that was great. Great. That's wow. from the chat. I yes. can't believe we actually have a tinfoil hat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's bring it back around here uh, for a moment. Uh, Brian, you wanted to talk about, and please keep your hat on to do this. Uh, you wanted to talk about, I believe you said old people tech? Yeah, old people tech. So okay. getting oh. older is getting easier because of technology. Okay. And I'm learning this. Well, so. thank God for me. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, Brad. Me too, because I, so I've aged a lot in like the last couple months. And <laughs> so basically, I, I guess I've been just wearing down my body over the last four years, and my body never Brian, had a chance to breathe I to realize to it. I to to you. Everyone has aged in the last couple months. Yeah. <laughs> This is true. It's not good. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, Ron, do you need a hat too? Do you no, need a hat? I don't need a hat. No. I'm good. So my wrist has been... So I, I sleep on the right side of my body. Mm -hmm. I have... Well, not anymore. We'll get into that. I, I've done it like my entire life. I've always slept on the right side, my right ear on. And because of that, I would stick my arm under my head, which can help give you terrible carpal tunnel. My, my entire arm would fall asleep so bad where I couldn't even move it. I had no control. I'd end up slapping myself across the face, have to suck on my fingers before I could even get the tingly feeling in my fingers because it was so dead. So I have crippling carpal tunnel in my right hand now. So they've got all of this old people tech for, for bad joints now. It's great. I've got this new computer that my friend Nick, who's in the audience, has built for me. So I bought myself a, a, uh, a vertical mouse. And instead of doing this, like, a thing where like your hand is, is it, kind it, of... Out and flat. Yeah, right? out and yeah. flat. It's a, it's a normal moving motion, as if you're grabbing a cup. Interesting. And that's how you move the mouse. It's great, and it really is much more comfortable. And I thought it would be difficult to adjust to, but really it's taken me almost no time since I've literally had the computer on for a matter of 10 minutes, and I'm already figuring it out. So, so it's great. And I also got a keyboard that is risen... And it, it, it's shaped for your hand, so it's a natural typing motion. Instead of you kind of putting is it your one of those together. like kind of like sp they call it a split keyboard almost, where it's, there's it's somewhat split. It's connected, yeah, but it is right, somewhat but you, split. There is a separation, so your hand sits. It's in called that a natural, natural ergonomic yep. keyboard mm -hmm. for business. It's by Microsoft. Yeah. It's really really great, super comfortable. But those things are helping me. And the biggest thing that I got on on Amazon, and I have it here in studio. It's an old person's pillow. <clears throat> and I know you're thinking, like, what is this? This pillow actually goes underneath your back. As I said, I've slept on, on my right side, and I've struggled to move to sleeping on my back. And it's just like a thin, <clears throat> flat pillow for the most part. No, it's part. not. It arches right? up in oh, the middle. Oh, it arches in the middle. It's for your lumbar. Oh. So basically what happened is to try to, to get off of my right shoulder, because not, not only do I have carpal tunnel now, but now I'm getting a rotary cuff issue. It's awful. So I started sleeping for a while. I was sleeping in a position like I was bracing for impact where I would sleep with like a pillow like half on my left side to force my body to lean right but not actually sleep on my right. Hmm. And I would keep my head to the right, and that helped for a while, and it's allowed me to ease into a transition where I can now sleep on my back. But sleeping on my back, I'm waking up in terrible pains in my lower back because my lumbar isn't supported. So this pillow, which I got online for like 20 bucks, is just the right side. It's memory foam, so it squishes in. And I put it right underneath my lumbar, and it is allowing me to sleep in extreme comfort every night. Like I said, getting old is better now because of technology. I'm making the transition from youth you to You are to welcoming, old age. welcoming your elderly future. I am with technology. And you know, now I don't even have to like, get my walker to walk over to the lights. I just ask A-Train to do it for me. It's great technology man it, it's it's for the We're elderly the they, th we all think store. it's for the young kids no it's for the old timers because it's making life easier for them your thoughts ron yeah i guess because i might be one of them I, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no i uh great if it's working for you that's the, that's the best part you know mm. that's why we all do tech right mm -hmm. is if it makes life better why not yeah Absolutely. 
Oh, uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for bringing that, Brian. I, trust and, me, I don't leave So what, what is it? If I'm looking for a pillow like that, what, what am I looking for, like on Amazon or something? So uh, I'll show you because I actually bought it off of Amazon. Uh, it's called the Panda's Pillow Cooling Lumbar Support Pillow for Sleeping Back. It also says ergonomic. It's memory foam. Uh, it's really, really great. I can actually pull up a picture of it if you want to see it. Uh, maybe. Here we go. So this is what it looks like. For those of you who are looking uh, mm. on Amazon, it's really, really great. And they have another one. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. They have one for your feet, which is great because you could put it like in between your legs or put your feet on it. But that's not going to solve the same back problems that I'm talking about. And I think that one, it, it's too round. It, it's, it's a good deal. It's on sale right now, right. but it's too round for underneath your back. You just need just a little bit, just enough to mm. fill in that little spot on your back. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so uh, also uh, looking at our stories for this week, I was excited about this. Google Podcasts is going to uh, search, have in-episode search coming. Uh, that's going to be uh, basically transcribing your entire podcast. Um, this is something I've been trying to find a cost-effective way to do this because I believed in the power of if you transcribe your entire podcast like now – you know, Google can do stuff with it. It'll help discoverability and everything. And apparently they are going to do this as part of, and uh, as they're showing here, if you go into Google podcasts, um, you will see that entire transcription. And I bet we could copy and paste those and use them for other needs. And I'm sure they're not going to be a hundred percent. No. I was just going to ask that. Is it almost like your voicemail when you look up your, on your iPhone or your Google device and they have the, the transcribed yeah. text? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be that kind of technology, mm -hmm. right? Which is definitely not 100%. Um, although, I mean, it was good enough that when, like, uh, a certain uh, a news entity was calling me and then uh, it, something about it was, was supposedly going to involve the police, uh, I got enough of that just, just reading the text message from it saying, I need Park to say, oh, crap. I need to call somebody and take care of this before it gets out of hand. You know, it's see, I use it for the opposite reason. I look at it so I know who's calling and who to ignore because like 99% right. of the calls. Oh, I yeah, get, yeah. That's I, usually I, what it is. I, I look at the, vo at the voice to text and I'm like, except for delete, those, delete. Except for those weird uh, Japanese um, the Japanese uh, pre-recorded messages I've been receiving for some reason. Hmm. Don't know what those are about. Wow. And I can't figure it out. So, <laughs> nice. There's no Google Translate. I mean, I, there, I, can't, I can't just like take the file and dump the audio in, can no, I? No, I don't. I think guess. So. I guess I can just play it and ask uh, G Train to be like, "Hey, <laughs> hey, what are they saying in <laughs> English, please?" Uh, uh, transcription mode, and we've done actually we played with transcription mode. I had somebody that 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 speaks Spanish in here. The, uh, and I wow. was like, "Hey, let's try this out." And you know, I would say something that she would say something back, and it does that in between. You know, you know, telling you what's going on. Well, that was one of the things that was touted with, I believe, it was the Pixel Buds. Yes, remember they were they were you had, but you had to have that their was, earbuds. Too. Yeah, the on the fly. Wow, uh, that's crazy language translation. But it didn't work too well. We didn't understand why you needed those earbuds to use it. But well, it's like part of the phone. And it only right. worked with the Pixel. Well, I get know. why. It's like the Air. Pods, thing yeah, with yeah, Apple. Yeah. They're trying to get exactly. you to buy their stuff. I think that's cool, though. Here's the thing: even if it didn't work out that great, what a huge first step that is towards oh, the universal translator. Absolutely, yeah, right. That's that's well, even Star Trek. as yeah. it is, as you know, we are in a very Latino-heavy neighborhood. So if there is an issue with a neighbor or something that comes in here and does not speak that great English, we can communicate because we have two Google Homes in here. Also, by the way. Ron Krauss now has his own uh, Why? tinfoil hat. I don't. Well, I didn't uh, want because like, we're all uh, into the. Yeah, we're all thinking not? about that conspiracy. Uh, because Missy thinks she's at uh, the Mongolian Grill where they do that all the time and is handing out tinfoil hats. Well, you don't know what Apple's doing with all this AirPlay stuff. It could yeah, while be while we're mind at control. it. Why are we? We'll ask you. Why are they applauding so much at those uh, keynotes, Brian? Uh, Ron. Oh dear Lord! You you, you pointed that out last. Why week. do we have to? Bring this subject up this, again. This can be just because we have tinfoil hats. Yes. And I'd like to see you cringe. Why are they applauding so much? You mean like with the with the Apple TV Plus? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it's dumb. I'll be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. You please. know what I have? That's really amazing. I have this folder on my iPhone that says entertainment, and I've got all of my entertainment options in one spot. Look, kids. I just saved Apple a lot of development money. There it is. <laughs> They've already done it. 
I, I, I need, you know what? You two need to start the less than awesome cast. That's what needs to happen. <laughs> you know, it, it, well, so. wait, it doesn't not have to not be awesome. It's just like let a, the man speak. The converging. Clap at the end. <laughs> Clap That's when true, someone too. new shows up on the screen. <laughs> That is true. It's kind of like you go. It's almost like the State of the Union address. He comes in and he's like, <gasps> "Woo!" Yes. Yeah. 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 My fellow Americans. Woo! You know, I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> I so His much hat is not that staying hat. on. <laughs> my tinfoil hat is defective. You are oh. at risk, my friend. <laughs> at risk. Yes. So oh, somebody looked up at the at the event this weekend. Was like, "Oh, there's those chemtrails." I'm like, "Oh no." <laughs> Anyways, uh, let I gotta bring this around with something. Let's talk about <laughs> Xbox Game Pass. Please. Yes, I actually think this is kind of an exciting idea. Um, there are rumors. This is not confirmed. Rumors. Yet. I'm glad I only bought three months of live or of uh, but, gold. But there's rumors that they're that Microsoft is going to combine Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live into a single Ooh. monthly subscription. And lower the overall cost by uh, five dollars, so we're be, we, you'd be at fourteen ninety nine per month. I don't know what that would break out to for the you know the yearly pass, mm -hmm. but when you start thinking about that, that definitely makes Game Pass a whole lot more attractive. Dude, I'd kind of be willing to convert over to that. Exactly, and I I would too. Uh, pretty much because like like we've talked about before, you know, I am yet to buy a disc for my Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Every game I've bought has been a digital copy. I And I have yet to play more than a few minutes of one of the disc games that came with my second-hand Xbox One. Right. Like, there's a stack of, like, eight of them over there. It's just like, can I buy the digital versions? Exactly. <laughs> well, here's a question as someone who doesn't play any games at all. Do you think that Xbox is kind of... I've, I've always, as someone from the outside looking in, I feel like PlayStation has kind of been, like, the SNES uh, of modern days, but I feel like it's transitioning to Xbox as like the main gaming system. Am I, am I right uh, in that or no? If you look at like sales, I'm, I'm a novice. Sales, I don't know. If yeah. you look at sales for this generation, uh, PlayStation ha is yeah. definitely La the leader in the in the clubhouse. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So like PlayStation Three was was under the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Yes. Um. And uh. But the, you know. But then like Nintendo goes neck and neck with them. They Nintendo always shows up late to the game, and with the Wii and the Switch, the Wii U didn't do quite as well. Uh, but, but they're kind of going after a different audience. Aren't oh, absolutely. They? Nintendo versus, absolutely. I feel like. PlayStation and Xbox are going after similar markets. Very similar market. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> you got the hat back on. Uh, <laughs> I put the hat back on. <laughs> got to have it. Uh, but no, I mean, to, so, so just to clarify, like you know, with with the uh, gold, you get like you know four to five games free a month, and those right. are you get to keep those. The Xbox, Xbox, game, Xbox, Xbox three hundred and sixty games is in your collection. The Xbox One games are in your collection as long as you are still subscribing to mm -hmm. that service. Now, the Game Pass is the, hey, you are, have available any of these, like, what, 100 games? I, I believe it's 100 games. 100 games. games. Yeah. So kind of like what we were talking last and week. And it is on a rotating schedule, so things will come in and go out. So there, so it's like Netflix. It is yeah, like Netflix. Yeah, right. But, but you are installing these games, you know. But it's a, you know, after like it's cycled out. If you have that installed on your thing, you cannot play it. You do not own it anymore. Exactly. But you could drop the whatever it is in the Microsoft Store to to purchase that forever, right? So it's really you could you could you know how long a game's there for a couple of months maybe. I think th I think it's at least two or three months per. So yeah. hey, the new Tomb Raider came in from last year. I really want to play that. I want to rock it through that in the next two months. Like that is my right. project for the next two months is to like, you know, quote unquote, to put a Netflix term, binge this game so I can get it in before that window runs out. That's also perfect for someone like me. If I were still playing games, because I have always been just God off with video games, no matter what it was, well, whether just it's go play stuff. What's that? Just go play stuff, and you're not dedicated to. I dropped well, sixty it. bucks. Now I really need to play all this game. You're not dedicated exactly. to exactly, and I, that's that's great for someone like me because I would get bored and quit. Mm -hmm. So, and, and and I find myself in that position now where I have so many games in my collection that I'm not like I don't feel like I, like that. 
the anxiety of I got to finish this game mm-hmm. is gone. Right. right. Like it's like, well, OK, I have Halo 4 and I have Gears of War 2. Gears of War 2 was a gold thing or I got the disc for cheaper because I wait, you know, and then it's just like, oh, I'm just going to play Halo until it's like, ah, I'm kind of stuck. I'll go over to Gears of War and play that for a little bit and, and, and play a little bit of this game or try this game out that I never really heard of, but I got in gold, so why the hell not, you know, and, and, and experience different game things. You're not just buying the Halo game because you know a Halo game is good. Yeah. You're going to buy, you're going to check out, um, what's, it, what's this awesome one, Bullet, it's a Bulletproof or something, Bullet Point. Bulletstorm, thank you. She sees it on my collection. I played the hell out of that one because I think it was based on, I think the Gears of War people worked on yep. it, but it was not a big, it wasn't like a AAA title. It was just kind of like another game. But, but, yeah, I it, feel was, like but this, it was a lot of fun. This could help that market too that, that actually Nintendo's tapping into, the people who were the casual gamers because they could experiment with a game and then they could decide through this service, like maybe they're not good enough to finish it in the short time that they have, mm-hmm. but they determine that they really like it, and then it'll encourage them to go out and buy the game, right. whereas otherwise they may have just given and, up. And that's what they're counting on, right? Yeah. Is, is, you know, oh man, I got halfway through that game. I really like to play the rest of it. I don't have a subscription. Well, it's been out for a little bit. It's about half the price it was before. Mm-hmm. I just threw thirty dollars at at that game, or that they I'm didn't have before. Really into the multiplayer edition, but the time is up, and I want to keep playing in my gaming clans or whatever the kids are calling it nowadays, so they can join those groups and still yeah, play. Is that still well, a thing? It, it, is it called a clan? Um, yeah, there's, there's clans. Okay. They're, they're, yeah, there they're, are clans. From game to game, yeah. there are clans, um, and and sometimes they call them different. They're we know one yeah. of the things that the article that I I actually linked to. Um, there's also the rumored, although I don't know, it might be confirmed now, but there, there's a, a discless, discless Ooh. Xbox One S mm-hmm. coming. So this would be a device that has no CD-ROM whatsoever. It's going to save, it's going to make that box a whole lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. And what they're saying is, is this is going to be that device for maybe the PlayStation 4 owner oh, wow. who who has an interest mm-hmm. in some of these Xbox only titles mm-hmm. you know it's a cheaper box that they can buy yeah. run alongside their PlayStation uh, my- get into something like this where you have 100 games a month yeah so it it really reduces the overall cost of getting in it, to the platform it's it's kind of like along the lines the reason why we do pay for things like AMC A list, right? I know I have a twenty dollars I spend a month, forty dollars for the pair of us, and that is all the date nights for the month. Yeah, I'm paying for my popcorn and that's it, and I can go watch all the movies. Right, right? like that's that can get out on town, and not have to worry about like blowing the budget because it's real tight running your own business, right? And uh, you know you don't have to worry about that. So so when you look at and, and you also mentioned in here the the rumored all access subscription where they you they would actually lease an Xbox One X with yeah. you plus these two services for thirty five dollars a month. It's lowering that barrier of entry, getting a little renaissance with you too, and and it also it just like you know and it's a monthly fee. You literally could like say, hey, we have this, uh, Junior, stop begging for new games because you have a hundred games to play. Exactly. You know? I'll be honest, someone like me, I would consider that. And I haven't played a video game in years because it's something that I could try. And, free. and you yeah. don't have to drop yeah. like $500 to get it, in the first it, place. Right. It yeah. lowers that barrier to entry. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is, I just, I, I don't have, like, like so I don't play video games a lot. And most video games I don't enjoy. So I don't see the value. Like, there's right. not a cost value. Like, it doesn't have that value to me. I couldn't imagine spending hundreds of dollars on a game console because I know I'll never use it. But something yeah, like this yeah, yeah. is not that expensive. I could see myself experimenting with it, having fun with it, mm-hmm. and I really mm-hmm. think it's a and neat plus idea. And with indie games and things, there are so many different types of experiences. Mm-hmm. Kind of like what mm-hmm. they were talking about, the Apple game thing. Like, I'm excited to see what kind of interesting, weird little games, you know, like our Monument Valleys and, and Alto's Adventure that I still play the hell out of. Yeah. Right? Like, I love, like, just weird, quirky, not just the next Call of Duty or Call of Duty clone, right? And I think that's that's what's exciting about that collection these days. I'll be honest. I think Apple kind of 
missed their opportunity with gaming because they were way ahead of everybody else with the smart TV concept. And mm -hmm. I think if they would have adopted that earlier, they could actually be a competitor, not so much with Nintendo, but even like a step beyond that, almost like a uh, kind of kind of a between the the yeah. cell phone game player. Well, they're and the Nintendo. casual game, the casual yeah. games. But yeah. they keep pushing for like trying to get the quote unquote hardcore higher end games on there. Hey, look, your 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 phone can do this, but you probably would rather do it on your Xbox. Yeah, anyways, I feel like right? any serious gamer yeah. is not gonna do yeah. that. No, and also there's a, a quote unquote real games conversation that I saw crop up over the last week, but. <laughs> Uh, it, it, if it's a game, it's on. It's a game, and you're having fun. It doesn't matter if it's Candy Crush. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Alto's Adventure. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's Call of Duty. Like it's a game, and and you know. My mom's a gamer. She's got fingers like you. you know, she's already on the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> we well, you know, and we should also point out that this um, service, you know, this Game Pass, most of the first party games from Microsoft have actually gone directly to Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So day and date of release, they're showing up in this service that you would be subscribed to. And you know, so we're talking we're talking AAA to you know, some of their your know, AAA games. The you know, the first party wow. games, the came the games made by the Microsoft development studios are mm -hmm. showing up in Game Pass on release date. Or and wow. you and you do also have because I, I noticed that when I, I switched through the store you have that pass. You also have an EA Game Pass. Yeah, right. So EA now you can has subscribe to the all EA also. one that has moose. I don't know how new they get. Yeah, they're, like, they're think, a few I think months off. Here and there, I think things belong like uh, well, uh, uh, not Apex Legend, but the one after it that was just released. Um, that uh, it, it, it's similar. It's a first person shooter anthem. Yeah. Perhaps. I yeah. Usually I you'll get ten days. Um, at release, you'll get yeah. 10 days, and then a few months down the road, It'll pop then up. the game will actually be in yeah. there. Yeah. So, uh, again, so there's, there's that, too. It's not 10 bucks a month, probably, but still. Anyways, a lot of stuff going on, but uh, for but at the moment, I want to give a shout-out to our friend Alex Cars. I got to hang out with Alex. Woo. This T-shirt is one he designed. It's a Wrestling Is T-shirt from uh, um, OccupyProWrestling.com. There it is. We are having a lot of fun with this because Missy has uh, post-it notes. We'll play with these more uh, uh, later because it has wrestling is and a blank spot. And then I have post-it notes like wrestling is my happy place. And I can interchange them during the shows here. Like like so. I don't know. I got a bar in the middle. Uh, but anyways, our friend Alex Carr is over at alexcars.media. He is over there and he is uh, putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital projects. Uh, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Go check them out at alexcars.media today to help you with your design product project over there. He's down there in the Los Angeles area, but he does a lot of projects with us here in Pittsburgh. The, the internet is so great. He's even done t-shirts and web designs for us here on some of our own projects. You can see those uh, over at Alex Cars K A H R S dot media. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, once again, Brian, thank you so much for coming back to the show. Thank you for having and me. And introducing in uh, 340 episodes, we have not had tinfoil hats physically on this show. <laughs> thank you, Missy, for hey, uh, protecting us. Protecting us from airplay seeping shot. into our minds. <laughs> Give me, give me a profile. Give me a side profile. They, they got to see how that's sticking out there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, man. So what? Uh, tell me again, what's going on with you? What can people check out out there? Or what's uh, coming? Check out the Pittsburgh Thunderbirds, Pittsburgh's most exciting professional sports team. They're part of the American Ultimate Disc League. They've got uh, games coming up. Their first game is actually going to be, I believe, on May 4th, Star Wars Day. They've got beer for sale there. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be exciting. I'll be uh, doing some writing for them. Super, super pumped for that. And, of course, 412Biz, check them out. They are Pittsburgh's premier business blog. Just Google 412Biz. It's all right there. PGH Museums, that's on the way. But we'll get to that in the works in a few months. That's right. Uh, where can people uh, uh, hit you up, Twitter and such? Uh, yeah, well, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me there, or you can hit me up on Twitter. It's bcrawpgh, and then you could follow. Actually, here's here's what I want you to do: go to Facebook, follow PGH Museums at at PGH Museums on Instagram and Twitter, and then you'll be the first 
to get the information when it comes out, when we launch this huge comprehensive directory. We've got over 30 museums, actually over 50 museums on the list right now, and we've barely scratched the surface. It's insane. You don't want to miss out on so many of these hidden treasures that no one knows anything about. It's going to be great. Fantastic. Looking forward to see what comes out of you in this uh, next chapter. But the tinfoil hat is still in tow, as you do. Not taking that off. Ron Krauss. What's up? How have, are you? Have you ever worn a tinfoil hat before? Um, is this a first maybe. to you? Don't yeah. lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stylish hat. It doesn't stay on very well, but <laughs> it's there. But does it protect you? Yes, do you feel it protects more, Do you feel me. comforted? I, well... We won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be able to check you oh, out there online. Goes. There it goes. So, Crazy Kraus on Twitter. I don't post much. I'm, I'm more of a follower than a, than a speaker. He's a lurker. But hit him up Ron for Ron Kraus on Facebook. But you will answer questions. If, yes, I uh, will. I'll know. try my best to answer any question anybody asks. Or, or, or find somebody that does. Exactly. Yes, in your Windows and Android, Android issues. Producer Missy, thank you so much for keeping things straight and making tinfoil hats. Yay. Thank you. I am called upon to do many things. (laughs) The fact that I got to make tinfoil hats tonight... This is a new high for this yes, uh, this show. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, please go check out our friends' uh, live streams this week. We are going to be back at it with Pittsburgh Current. Uh, they had a week hiatus, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, we will be back on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. with uh, Ariana Berenger is going to be, I believe, back on the show. I think we've had her on before uh, talking about the lack of diversity in the Democratic party Ooh. uh so a big discussions there I, I i think i see you pop into that live chat every once in a while brian uh don't i you've been around on the tuesday or thursday mornings right thursday morning uh, can you repeat that i was reading oh I, I, I say i think i've seen you in the chat room for that oh yeah uh, I, here I, and there, so current. yeah absolutely the current really yeah. excited to hear about this this new one though with the diversity of the democratic party i think mm-hmm. it's a really interesting con- concept and topic because it's a party that often preaches about its diversity, and I think it's interesting to see some holes in, in some of that mm-hmm. some of that uh, verbiage. Also, a shout out because I, I think this has happened since last show. Caffeinated Innovation, uh, uh, somebody that we're going to be uh, working with uh, through Psychic Media uh, Services. Uh, that's our friends at Innovation Works, uh, who we've talked about uh, at least uh, uh, by uh, proxy here on the show between Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab Gear. Uh, they are going to be, uh, well, well, they've, they've just, uh, we just posted with them one they are on iTunes and Google podcasts and all the places you want to get podcasts now. Uh, so you can check out their first season of shows that they had done, uh, as well as their, uh, inclusive innovation discussion and panel from, uh, just, uh, two weeks ago now, I think. Uh, so that's part of that. Go look up caffeinated innovation on your podcatcher. Uh, and if it's not there, please tell me, and I'll make sure it gets there if I'm missing any uh, important platforms. But I think we got all the big ones here. Uh, as we do, uh, Pandora is the next one I'm, I'm tackling. Nice. Look out for that. I'm, 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 I'm poking at them to figure out how to do a mass because it's a little – it's different. Hmm. It, it, it's, it's a little different. We'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but uh, an interesting thing. So um, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to have more streams. Some of the wrestling shows will be coming back next week on the Sorgatron Media Network, too. So uh, go check out uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Indie Wrestling to see uh, what's coming up there. I'm going to ask somebody about Panda Bears in Japan from her trip uh, six weeks uh, there next uh, Wednesday. Uh, uh, Ray Lynn is going to be a part of that show. And, uh, and I'll ask her about being on uh, Women of Wrestling over on uh, Access TV that they have on every Friday night, too. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, thank you, our awesome chat room. That's been hopping all night. Really cool uh, interactions tonight for the awesome cast. Thank you so much, uh, everybody that's been in there. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.